All right, all right. Let's get this on. Let's just get this out in the open and let's take care of this today. Where's my daily? See, when I went to Chicago, you guys had a great time making me into like this composite Russian Jewish woman and or like tranny person because I think you were expecting me to be transgender and then it would have been okay, right? It would have totally been okay if I had been queer or if I had been trans man and especially if I helped hook up one of those like contracts, <laughs> right? And it would have been totally okay and you would have totally gone for it. But you spent a couple of years like letting me live and letting me exist as this person that created this amazing, amazing, amazing situation, right? Co-created with other people because there were other people involved. We were journalists, we were editors, we were activists, you know, some of us were socialists, democratic socialists, and you know, we understood ourselves in a legacy of people, including people that, you know, ended up being put on trial and accused of things like communism or maybe some other kind of problem, you know, First Amendment speech issues. And then, you know, we're like, wow, we really see ourselves in these other people now today, you know, that are dealing with this situation. And what we did with our personal life was supposed to be a part of creating a society that was about consent, understanding the situation. And if there's a risk that needs to be taken, well, you understand what it is. So you got to basically cover your own ass, right? And part of the way you cover your own ass is, you know, you put out there and if something comes up, you own up to it. And if you don't own up to it, there are consequences and you're expecting people to be really critical. But what you're not expecting is for people to just wholesale, completely liquidate the entire movement, right? And part of that's my fault. Because I already knew from the beginning I was really a Menshevik and I was not a Bolshevik, right? That I was really not into, you know, five-year plans as much as I was into, you know, that like other kind of guild, right? The other kind of, you know, not the bond, right? But the bond, it's kind of different. And so I had a completely different understanding. I ended up going off a little, but I really wasn't expecting you to pull that whole, like completely wholesale liquidate any other alternative to the single party monolith that everybody has to prescribe to. I didn't know how vicious the Chicago machine was. And the ironic thing is I never met a daily in Chicago. The entire time I was in Chicago, I only... I didn't meet any Chicago Irish. And that's the ironic thing, because you're really, really pissed. It's something about, you know, this slander or something. And I wasn't allowed to meet anybody who had Irish ancestry the entire time I was in Chicago, except for one person, right? One person. I had one Mick. And I saw him when I went back in 2016, and that's why I'm really sore, right? Because I did have a daily. You guys farmed me out to San Francisco, and I had a very different life. And I had a daily out there. And he was from San Francisco, and he loved baseball. And he knew more about baseball than anybody I've ever met in my life. And I know, this is kind of strange, because I had some other people out there, and they knew something about baseball. Not like this guy. You can't even think about baseball once you've met a guy like this the same way. Because it's like it opens up an entire level. And that means that if you're still trying to capitalize on that 108 deal that you hustled my ass back to Chicago just in time to break, so that then you could hustle my ass to Houston just in time to break the Astros deal, right? That little fucking, that little fucking Turner fucking Emmanuel swap when those mayors made those uh, bets on the phone, which is what they do, right? And now we're all the way down the road. And you never gave me my Chicago Daily. You never gave me any Chicago Irish. My daily was in San Francisco. And what did you do with my San Francisco? Because everything you've done in your little competitive sports gambling milieu, which if you eliminate from public disclosure my role, it means one thing. If you are aware real time of my role in those events, 1986, guys, World Series 1986, that wasn't about you. That wasn't about you. Where's Jed? Where's Jed Daly? Where is he? Everything else is bullshit. Where's Jed Daly? Where is he? I'm gonna ask you every single day. Jed, where are you? Jed Daly, where are you? Because I think he can help like maybe disprove something, but even if he can't, I don't care. You guys thought you could play? You guys thought you were gamers? You have no fucking idea what you're dealing with. And that's why you kill all the people that actually know the game. And now we don't even know. Now you can't even get a crowd in the stadium. You know that? You can't even get a goddamn fucking audience anymore on site. That's what you did to the game. Where's Jed? Where's Jed Daly? Hmm? 
I know, I know. You probably wanted Epstein, right? But you're not getting Epstein. Where's Daly? I need Daly. 